Hello, welcome to this lesson of the Linear Algebra Tutor. In the last section, we were introduced to inconsistent systems. Those are systems of equations that don't have a solution. There's no common point that's going to satisfy all of those equations uh, in that last case that we had. Now what we're going to do is begin to talk about cases when we have an infinity of solutions. And this is the kind of stuff that even though you may have been exposed to it in an algebra class before or you know, in, in, a, in a previous class, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently in, a, in the context of linear algebra. So the way we're going to solve it and the way we're going to write our solution is going to be how you'll be expected to do it in a typical linear algebra class. So first of all, let's just write a system of equations down. It's not going to look too special uh, at first. So we'll have x plus 2y minus z is equal to 1. Then we'll have x plus z is equal to 3. And x plus y is equal to 2. Now you would never know by looking at this. There's no way that you can know by looking at this. But this set of equations actually has an infinity of solutions, an infinite set of points. It doesn't mean any point in space is a solution. It just means that there exists a set of points, an infinity of those such points, that will actually satisfy the set of equations. So what we're going to do is go ahead and solve the problem using matrices and then I'll kind of draw something on the board to illustrate how you can have an infinite set, an infinite set of solutions to a system like this. But first, let's just jump into the math and see what the matrix algebra stuff is telling you, the linear algebra stuff is telling you. Uh, you're not going to know until you get down to the end if this uh, is a consistent set of equations, an inconsistent set of equations, or if it contains an infinity of solutions. So let's go ahead and write it down. Here's our augmented matrix. We have 1, 2, negative 1, 1. All right. And then we have 1 for x, nothing for y in here, so we have to put a 0. We have 1 for a z, and then we have a 3 over here. 1 for x, 1 for y, nothing for z, so we have to put a 0, and then we have a 2. So this is my augmented set of equations. All right. Now, I feel like we have done enough row reduction where you kind of know what to do. You would take this guy, multiply it uh, by negative 1, add it to this, that would give me a 0 here. You would take this times negative 1, add it to this, that would give me a 0 here. And then you would continue on going. And what you're trying to do is getting a, you're trying to get the diagonal elements, all 1s, along the diagonals. And you want to get zeros everywhere else. That's what you're always trying to do. But what you're going to find is that if you have uh, this set of equations where you have an infinity of solutions, that you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do that. You'll try. You'll try to do one thing and then do the next thing and do the next thing, but you'll end up figuring out eventually that there's no way to achieve a diagonal set of ones with an off-diagonal set of zeros for cases where it's, it's an infinity of solutions like this. So instead of showing all of those steps, I feel like we have done enough row 